In today's video, I want to talk about a fantasy subgenre that is getting a lot of traction lately, and it is romantasy. So hello, my fellow fantasy book lovers, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, hi and welcome. My name is Kathy. I'm a god girl from Belgium, and I love to read fantasy books. Now, before we get into the book recommendations, I first want to talk about what romantasy actually is. Now, in my opinion, romantasy are books that have a general plotline that is focused more on the romance aspect of the book than the actual plot and things happening. So the main character's love life is more of interest than hunting demons or slaying dragons or what have you. So this is for me what marks romantasy. Now, romanticity has been around for a very long time, and even when I started reading at age 15, 16, romanticity was already a thing. It was not as hyped or as defined as it is nowadays, but it was certainly present. Now, I was raised in the French part of Belgium, so I have some references for this. Um, they were called Edition My Lady and I will put them here on screen, and they had like different subcategories of it. Now, I remember reading a lot of the bit lit category, which involves vampires, fae, werewolves, etc. And a few of the series back then that were really popular were, of course, the Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton. It is super popular. I think they actually write a book every single year for this series, and it has been going on for 20, 30, maybe even more books. So the Anita Blake series is vampires, werewolves, other creatures combined. Then we had another author who is called Patricia Briggs, and the Mercy Thompson series is one that I read, I think, three or four books by back in the days when I was 17, more or less. Um, and I remember that this was like very werewolf-based or wolf-based generally. And then, of course, there were also the fae-type stories. And there we had Jasmine Gillenorn. And the first book is called Witchling. And there's like the Sisters of the Moon, I think the series is actually called. So um, there's different sisters. And I think each book talks about one of these sisters more in detail, but there is a general story arc. Now, these are fantasy romances that I read back in the day, so they're not like super new. And there is another series that also released back then, but that I never got into, that I now got the first book of on my bookshelf. Um, it was gifted to me by a friend for my birthday, and it is the Black Daggerhood series. So this is also fantasy romance, and these are all series that already have multiple parts of it that have been written, or there is a completed arc, etc. So these are like the older series that got me into fantasy romance. Now, back in the days, it wasn't like a separate part of the books that you could buy. It was really like within the fantasy. So it didn't really stand out that it was only fantasy romance. And that's, I think, how I was able at a younger age to already get these books. When we look at nowadays, there is a clear definition of like epic fantasy, urban fantasy, and then romantasy. Romantasy in a lot of bookstores is getting its own aisle, its own like part of the fantasy books, etc. It is a genre that is really like peaking right now, I feel personally, especially with books such as Bride by Ailey Hazelwood, and of course, Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. And of course, let's not forget Sarah Yemas with Throne of Glass, A Court of Tones and Roses, and Crescent City. Those are all books that are very much going around right now. They are getting people back into reading, which is an amazing thing, and all of these people are actually starting to read fantasy romance. But of course, I wouldn't be me without recommending a few other books that maybe aren't as widely known as those. The first series that I want to talk about is one that is going to be finished this year, and it has five books in total. What a coincidence. It is about a girl and five dragon shifters, and it's a why choose romance, so you know she's gonna end up with all of them. In the first book, you will encounter four out of the five dragons, and then in the second book, the fifth one gets added to the equation, and it builds up from there. It's a really fun read. It's a really easy read. It is dragon shifters, and I'm not gonna talk too much about the main character, but she is more than you will see in the first book. In the first book, it's actually a trial-based situation with a lot of human girls who have to compete against each other to win the chance to marry one of the dragon kings. And there is even gods involved, like the Greek gods starting book two or maybe book three. It's a little bit... I didn't think it was necessary, and I just think it was done to like pull out the story. Nonetheless, I really enjoy it. And I've actually read book one, two, and three in a day each, I think. Book four is currently on its way to me, and book five is releasing end of this year, and I'm super excited for it. 
Up next, another author whose books really focus on the romance part, and it is Sarah Hawley. Two of the three books are already out. The first one is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, and it's exactly what it sounds like. A witch has accidentally summoned a demon, and she tries to hide her mistake by then fake dating the demon. Of course, more stars happening between them. In the second book, we follow two different characters, so it's her best friend and then another demon, and it is A Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch. So it's again exactly what the title says, the demon is trying to woo the witch and to start dating them. And then the third book is going to be a werewolf's guide to seducing a vampire and it's going to follow another person within the same um, village where everything takes place. But we will see the other characters still making small appearances, but the main characters are different from each book, which I really enjoy. Then there's a series that I only recently discovered and is That Time I Got Drunk and. The first book is called That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon and we follow our female main character who is curvy of colored skin and who accidentally saves a demon and then gets embarked on like a quest with said demon. They're very thin books, they're very enjoyable. And the second book I read just recently is called That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf. We follow the best friend of the main character from book one who yeets a love potion at a werewolf. And then of course like they start dating, she's trying to figure out is it the love potion, is it not? Like it's a very, it's like low stakes but there's still something going on. So in the first book the main character needs to destroy shrines to a fake god. And in the second one there's people being abducted from their village and they want to uncover what is happening and what is uh, going on with these people. So there is another plotline happening except the romance, but the romance is very available. And then of course if you like something a little bit more laid back, not heavy on smut, because these books all have contained smut so far, there is of course My Roommate is a Vampire. In My Roommate is a Vampire we follow a young girl who is looking for a place to rent and a vampire who is renting out a room in his apartment for way too cheap and they actually start like getting involved and you notice straight away that they will get involved eventually and only at the very end of the book more happens, so they kiss and more. And if you want more rich vampires who don't really know what's going on in the current world, there's also filthy rich vampires. The setup is kind of the same. You have this very rich vampire who has been in a slumber for X amount of years, who's been woken up, and every X amount of years the sons and daughters from the vampire coven need to marry one of the witches coven to like create an alliance etc. So this vampire awakens and he sees a human girl playing at that party and he fakes dating her, but they actually start dating to cover up for the whole situation because he does not want to marry a witch. And that is the premises of book one. Now this book is very much like a soap opera, it has a lot of highs and a lot of lows and it's a lot of drama and intensity happening. So if you like that I would really recommend Filthy Rich Vampire and there is four books and it is a completed series. And finally, if you're more into fairy tales and fae, I could highly recommend Scarlet St. Clair's Mountains Made of Glass and Apples Dipped in Gold. Both take place with the same kind of family of main characters, so they're both fae from the same realms and from the same family that are like brothers to each other. And every book is inspired by fairy tales, by old fairy tales. So you, they will pull different elements from each of the books. Now these books do have a separate plotline going on from the romanticy or from the romance interest, but it is still heavily present. And if you enjoy Scarlett St. Clair's writing style, there's of course also the Hades ex Persephone um, that focuses on the Greek mythology, where you have a book written from each point of view, which is totally unnecessary, but hey, you have them. And there's also the Adrian X Isolde. Those focus more on vampires. Even if I loved the first book, King of Battle and Blood, I didn't really like the second one, Queen of Myth and Monsters. And there is also a third book coming out in the Adrian X Isolde series. The Hades and Persephone is completed with seven books. Uh, Adrian X Isolde has a third book coming out this year, and I'm not sure yet how it's gonna be or what themes it's gonna explore more. But I personally miss the vampiric take that book one had and then in book two they evolve more monsters and I felt like just the vampire story was better for me. But that's of course my personal opinion.
So these are a few of my personal favorite romantasy books, my guilty pleasure reads. I use these as palette cleansers in between more heavy reads, so I do read them occasionally, but it's not like I only read fantasy romance. Of course, let me know in a comment down below if you've read one or more of these books, what you thought about them, and if you have more recommendations in the same genre, feel free to let me know as well. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you haven't already and you'd like to be, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every week and I would love to have you for every single one of them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.